Okay, so in this video, I want to quickly touch on the 4K video from the Canon EOS 5D Mark IV. Now, obviously it's a, it's a pain for a lot of people. You may have read, or you probably have read online if you're interested in cameras, uh, that the file size is thrown out by the Canon EOS 5D Mark IV are huge. It's 500 megabits per second using an old codec called MJPEG, uh, which basically uh, takes one 8.8 .8 megapixel photo every second. And if you're shooting 30 frames a second, that's gonna produce large file sizes. Uh, you know, a minute's worth of video is gonna be in the gigabyte. So it's quite horrendous. Now that means that this camera, if you're a videographer that shoots events, weddings, uh, long interviews, that kind of thing, this camera's not for you, absolutely not for you. And I'd recommend going elsewhere until they at least change the codec, if they ever do. Um, that's in 4K video. Where the camera is good for me, um, is where I shoot things like uh, one minute or 30 second uh, stock video clips, or if I'm shooting for a client, I'll do short clips for maybe between five and 20 seconds to offload onto a commercial project. Um, or I'll do short clips for, for a wedding where I'll just integrate them into a slideshow. But like I said, for a, a standard video camera, it's no good at all. The file sizes absolutely are huge. Um, I filmed a, a concert not so long ago um, and I couldn't continue using the Canon. It was just, the file sizes were way too big. You're gonna need huge cards, memory cards. Um, so it's just no good. So I reverted back to other cameras, um, but it is good. And I was using it for doing short clips. It's great in low light. So I was do doing short clips as B-roll, C-roll to throw into the video later. Um, but let's talk about quickly about the, the megabits per second. Now, um, I just wanna compare because one of my arguments, I'm, I'm not a, a massive fanboy. I like Canon, I've always used them, but I'm not gonna stick up for them on this because I really wish they'd produce the camera. Um, okay, maybe keep the, the uh, MJPEG option, but also give us the, the choice of having uh, a lower bit rate using um, maybe MP, uh, MP4 or .movie files. Um, you know, at least give us the choice, but maybe someone like Magic Lantern will have a workaround with that, I don't know. But, you know, it's just a real, I don't know why they've done it, but um, for all the people that are complaining about the Canon 5D Mark IV with regards to this, um, you have to bear in mind that the 1DX Mark II also uses the same MJPEG. And I don't really see that many people complaining too much about that camera. Um, uses exactly the same video for 4K. So, you know, that's one argument. Another argument is that I fly the DJI Inspire 1 and I've got the X5 camera on there, which is a micro four thirds. And at 4K, it shoots great files, beautiful files, um, and it shoots in .movie or MPEG, uh, MP4. So the file sizes are pretty small. They're, they're, they're workable, they're good. I do still have to sometimes uh, render them out as a proxy file, like I do with the Canon files. Uh, that allows me to actually have good smooth movement when I'm previewing in full um, in my software. Um, so yeah, the, the, the 5D Mark IV shoots that file size. The, obviously the, the Inspire one shoots much, a much better um, usable bit rate, but the people that have upgraded the Inspire one to the Inspire one RAW, with that you're actually shooting a, in, in RAW 4K, something like 2.3 gigabits per second. It's huge, the file sizes are massive. And I know someone that's actually given their, their X5R back because the files were really unworkable and unusable. You really do need a powerful computer and to be able to transcode them into something else. So even people with the Inspire RAW, they're gonna to have to have a workaround to, to be able to work on those files. And then you've got, let's switch to the other camera now. This is the 5D Mark IV. I've got another camera running and it's the GH4. So I'm on the GH4 now. And with this camera, I love it. It's a fantastic camera. Um, and I'm filming using a Metabone Speed Booster with a 16 to 35 Canon lens, but I'm outputting to a Atomos Ninja Flame, and I'm outputting it to uh, ProRes HQ, which is the, the, the highest file this, this will actually produce. And I think, um, we're gonna check on a computer in a minute, but the file sizes are the, the same, if not bigger than the Canon 5D Mark IV. And I have used this on a number of jobs, um, filming for clients and things like that, because the the, the quality of the footage is absolutely superb. Now on both of these cameras, on the Canon, which we're back on now, I'm shooting with a, um, a color profile. Uh, it's a C-Log it's a profile that someone's made. It's not the proper C-Log because Canon didn't give us one of those, but this is a C-Log profile made by someone and I bought it for 10 pounds or $10. Um, so it gives me a relatively flat profile to work with. And to try and match that, we're back on the GH4 now. I'm using the, uh, the Panasonic V-Log, which costs something like $99. Um, again, to give a flat profile to kind of mix the two. And we're both on 200 ISO at 50th of a second on F4. So I'm trying to match the cameras as similarly as possible to, 
see if the 5D Mark IV shooting 4K at 500 megabits per second is even as big or as bad as the GH4 shooting at ProRes HQ, which I've used for, like I say, for, for some big corporate clients. So what I'm gonna do now is grade the footage. I may do, I may grade it now, let's have a look. Let's grade it now. So now you're seeing both footage graded. So this is the, the GH4, which has now gone from, um, from the, the V-Log down to just a, a quick grading in Sony Vegas Pro. And on the Canon 5D Mark IV, which you're on now, I've done the same sort of grading, similar thing using um, the Film Convert Pro, um, and that's also done in Sony Vegas. Let's go back to the GH4, um, and we're going to now go and look on the computer just to see how the file sizes compare. So I think we've been filming for about six minutes or so, six and a half minutes. So we'll see just how big both of those files are. Let's go back to the 5D Mark IV. We're now going to see just how big both of those files are uh, to, to give a, a rough comparison because I know there's workarounds. I know it's a pain in the butt with the, the 5D Mark IV file sizes. But my point is with the 1DX Mark II, with the Inspire X5R RAW, and also with the Panasonic GH4 using the Atomos Ninja Flame, all of these cameras produce huge file sizes. So really, for me, I've kind of got used to it and it doesn't bother me that much because I use the camera for many different things other than just uh, videography. So let's go now and look at the, uh, the file sizes and see how they compare. Okay, so this is the folder I'm using to produce this video. And you can see here the, the Sony Vegas file, uh, the saved file. But if I show you first, I actually did a, a quick five minute video, which I messed up first of all, um, because I, even though I had the Canon on the correct settings, I actually had the Panasonic GH4 set to the slightly lower resolution of 422 and not, um, not ProRes HQ, it was on ProRes 422. So it might be a good idea just to show you that one quickly. Um, up here you can see the Canon file and the video was 4 minutes 53 and the file size was just under 19 gigabytes. That's huge for a five minute video. But if we look at the same video from the GH4 at ProRes 422, you can see again 4 minutes 52 and it's just over 17. So it's about one and a half gigabytes less. Uh, so it's very, very similar to the Canon at 4K. But if we go to the next video that I did, um, which is the one you've just seen, and incidentally, before I go any further, uh, you may have noticed that the Panasonic was quite a bit sharper than the Canon. Now, the reason for that is the Canon C-Log, um, if, you, if you think of a sharpness setting between minus five and plus five, the Canon was actually set to minus five sharpness, but the Panasonic um, with the, the Cine-like D that I used, actually had a sharpness of zero. So it was about five stops sharper than the, the Canon. So that's the reason possibly for seeing the difference in sharpness. Uh, but really th that video was just to show you the difference in file sizes. So let's go back to that. So the video you've just watched was, uh, the, the, the entire recording was seven minutes 31. Obviously I chopped bits off the ends, uh, but the entire recording was seven minutes 31 and that came to a whopping 30 gigabytes on the Canon 5D Mark IV. Um, but the same files, it's two files here on the GH4. Um, so again, here you can see, actually it's not, it's this one and this one. So those are the two files that I've used for the GH4. So the first one was seven minutes 31 on the Canon and on the Panasonic, it came to seven minutes 27. So yeah, obviously I turned one off before the other, but it's about the same sort of time, but you can see there that this one on the Panasonic comes to a whopping 39.1.2 so let's say 39 gigabytes for the Panasonic and for the Canon it's 30 gigabytes so just to recap filming on the Canon 5D Mark IV at 4k uh, for seven minutes at seven and a half minutes comes to 30 gigabytes but on the Panasonic GH4 output to the Atomos Ninja Flame at ProRes HQ it's still not raw it's just ProRes HQ uh, we get 39 gigabytes. So, you know, it's nine gigabytes more. It's almost a third more again. So you can see there that, you know, if you're looking for high quality footage with huge megabits uh, per second, then obviously, like I've said before, if you're using the Panasonic GH4 at ProRes HQ, or if you're using RAW on the Inspire 1, or even the, uh, the 1DX Mark II, you're gonna end up with pretty much the same file sizes. So, you know, all those cameras, you're gonna need a workaround, you're gonna to need to transcode them or use uh, proxy files. So I hope that just kind of clears it up a little bit with regards to MPEG, um, the M MJPEG 
used on the Canon 5DS Mark IV. Um, like I say, if you don't like it, don't buy it. And I would recommend for um, longer video jobs, then obviously use a, a better video camera, a, a dedicated video camera. Or saying that, if you're only filming in 1080p, the Canon 5DS, uh, sorry, <laughs> Canon EOS 5D Mark IV, the 1080p footage is superb. It uses the whole frame. Um, it's a much lower, uh, it's an MPEG4, MP4 uh, or .movie file. So, you know, your file size is way smaller and you can output it to the Ninja Flame or similar device as well. So, yep, I hope that clears it up with regards to the 4K. Like I said, it's a bit of a Marmite thing. Love it or hate it. So uh, there you go. I hope that helps.